Hi there, it's Nicole here today with a Penguin Beach Scene card. And one of my favorite things about this card is that I have combined components from My Favorite Things, Simon Says Stamp, and Lawn Fawn all on one card. That's one of my favorite things about card making is taking elements from lots of different manufacturers and combining them to make your own design. I'm going to start by die cutting, or pardon me, stamping all of the images that I'm going to be coloring in. The palm trees are from the Simon Says Stamp Warm Christmas Wishes stamp set, which is a cute stamp set that is all about like Santa on the beach. But for this particular card, I liked the shape of these palm trees and I even liked the lights around the palm trees. I didn't think that really added that Christmas element all that much. So I went ahead and used those and the surfboard from Warm Christmas Wishes. And then I'm gonna use two of the penguins and a beach ball from the My Favorite Things Penguins in Paradise stamp set. Then I'm gonna start coloring all of these in. I did leave in all of the coloring because I know so many of you really kind of like to see the coloring and um, watch that whole process. So I did leave that all in. This is a ton of coloring. I simply kind of stamped everything, sat down, and then started coloring while I watched TV with my daughter. So this is a little bit more time intensive card only because of the coloring, because there's so much of it on this particular card and I did incorporate so many colors. I kind of, I probably should have called it the rainbow penguin beach scene card because it's kind of a rainbow of colors. The palm trees are only two colors, YG05 and YG17. And then once I've blended them out, I did go back in with my darker of the two colors and just add some little dots for some texture and interest. And it gives it a little bit more of shading maybe, just or just adds interest to the, the trees, I think. I'm only gonna color one of them on screen for you because both of them are colored exactly the same. The tree trunk is gonna be E55 and E57. I did try to stay out of the Christmas lights that are wrapped around the tree as best I could. If some of the brown gets in the Christmas lights, that's okay. Um, I'm going to take a really light yellow marker and it has so much colorless blender in it, it will kind of move that color out. I'm going to add a little E57 along the right side of the tree trunk and blend it out. This Y00 is going to be the start of my lights on the tree. Um, I found that I thought it was a little too light, so I added a little Y08 as well. For the grass there along the bottom, I used the same two colors that I used for the palm tree, but I did incorporate a little G07 as well. And I really kind of worked to blend this all out and I added more color along the bottom, only to find when I die cut this image, it die cuts it pretty close to the grass image. So I, I lost a lot of that, which was absolutely fine because I wasn't totally happy with how it turned out along the bottom edge there. I'm going to go ahead and skip over to the inner tube on this penguin here and I wanted to do it in bright red. I'm using R24, 29, and 46. The little beak on my penguin as well as his feet are going to be YR04. I did pull in just a little R24 to add some shading to his little beak there. Adding some of that darker R46 where it will naturally be darker around the edges. And then I'm taking a colorless blender and removing some of the color where there would be a highlight on that inner tube from the sunshine. And that's just gonna move some of the ink around and lighten that. I will add some more definition to that a little bit later with a um, glaze pen. To color in the penguin, I like to start a little bit lighter than what I actually want him to end up looking. So I started with um, W6, warm gray six, and then I will gradually pull in a little warm gray seven and eight. And that's gonna darken it up a lot. So I'm using my darkest color here, that warm gray eight, 
kind of tracing around some of those areas where I want it, the shading to be much darker. And then blending it out with Warm Gray 7 and going back with Warm Gray 6 and blending it out more. Once I have it blended the way I want it to look, I will add maybe just a little bit more with my Warm Gray 8 and then add some of that dot detail to the Penguin as well that adds interest and fun, especially to critters. It's one of my favorite ways to add some texture to critters or animals, whatever you want to call them. For the white area on the penguin, I, when you leave it so stark white, I think it's just, it is really glaringly white. So I always like to go in with a really light color. So it still gives the illusion of being white. So I'm using warm gray one and zero zero, or two and zero zero rather, and a little R zero zero for the cheeks to pinken them up. And again, adding that dot detail with the warm gray two marker and that just adds a lot of interest. The other penguin is gonna be colored exactly the same. His swim trunks and popsicle will of course be another color, but I did leave out the coloring of that. Here's that glaze marker for the highlights on the inner tube. But I did leave out the coloring of both that other palm tree and the penguin just to save time. The coloring, the color combinations are exactly the same as the ones I just did. Here are this penguin's swim trunks, and they are going to be in blue with B24, 26, and I believe 20, 28. <laughs> Had to double check. I'm going to just darken those up in some of those areas. I originally just started with the two markers and went ahead and moved on to that third darker color, the B28, just to really add some nice depth and dimension. There you can see both penguins have been colored as well as the palm trees. Now for the surfboard. For the surfboard, I really wanted it to be a rainbow of colors. And um, I started with my pink and my red, and I'm gonna have to color the other surfboard because as I started to color this one, I realized that I was going to need more shades per color family because I really didn't want to do any repeat. Like I didn't want to start over with pink and red near the bottom. I wanted it to go to pink to purple. I wanted the whole spectrum of the rainbow. So I did start over here and I'm going to do a lighter green stripe and then that same green stripe that I just did, which I'll show again on this one. So it's kind of a limey green and then more of the grass green. And then a I'll move on to an aqua color to transition into my blues. The blue color family, for whatever reason, I find it's really easy to do several shades or different shades in that color family. So I went from the aqua to the more kind of, I guess I would call it royal blue to a deeper blue. And then I finished with two stripes of purple along the bottom, a kind of lighter and then a little bit darker color of purple. Purples are always kind of hard for me for whatever reason. I don't think I color with them enough to be super comfortable with them. So I had to try out some different color combinations to get that, but the end result was exactly what I was looking for. I love that rainbow surfboard. I think it's super fun. Now I left this, the little skinny stripes white, which I did go in with a little warm gray zero zero and warm gray one, just to add a little touch of color to those white stripes. My beach ball is going to incorporate many of the same color combinations, just not quite as many. Um, it's going to be more of the primaries where I'm going to have red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, and a white section on this beach ball as well. The white section, again, will feature some warm gray zero, zero, and warm gray one. Such cute little images. I absolutely love them. I think they are just really super fun. There is a little bit bigger beach ball image in the Warm Christmas Wishes if you want a bigger one. This one is the, is the one from the Penguins in Paradise from My Favorite Things. And then I still need to color the popsicle on my penguin. And I decided to go with oranges for that. Here's where I'm coloring in those stripes on the surfboard with my warm gray 
Just tiny little touches on each side. I didn't even go all the way across. Very, very light. I'm gonna use YR04, 07, and then YR01 for the lighter area inside the popsicle, almost like it's an orange creamsicle, I guess is kind of what I was going for here. darken up his beak just a little bit. I felt like it was a little too light. I think I forgot to add a little, another shade to it. Once I have these all colored, I'm ready to die cut. But what I did was I forgot the My Favorite Things dies are solid. So I'm gonna die cut all three of them from another piece or a scrap piece of white cardstock. This is just a little trick. I should have die cut them stamped and then colored, I didn't, and I didn't want to like go on the off chance that I was going to mess them up. So I'm gonna trim each little section apart using my scissors and create a little notch in each. So here's the first one, I'm gonna line it up, making sure that it's even all the way around. I'm gonna take that coordinating die, lay it in place, hold on to it, and then just simply remove my piece of paper and I forgot to tear a little post-it. I'm gonna do it again. I'm going to trim out my other penguin. I've created a little notch in the bottom there. Line up my die. Oops, I shifted it. So I'll reline that up because I don't wanna recolor all of these and I don't wanna accidentally mess it up if I just try to eyeball it. Make sure that's perfect. Hold that in place, peel that little cheater paper out of the way. I'll do that for the circle as well. And then I can run these through my die cutting machine and die cut them and they're gonna die cut perfectly. So if you do what I do and you forget that they're solid dies and that you're going to need to die cut them first and then stamp and color, that's just an easy way to kind of cheat and still be able to use those images that you've worked so hard for. So go ahead and pop all of these out. I'm gonna take a Stardust glitter pen and add little dots to all of the, all of the lights around the trees. That's gonna help give them a little bit of that sparkly look. I've already added the white glaze pen to the inner tube, but I am gonna take a black glaze pen and just reinforce the eyes there. I like to do that. I think it makes them really pop. Then from some additional smooth white cardstock, I'm gonna die cut two rectangles using the Lawn Fawn Large Stitched Rectangle Die, the A2 size die. This is gonna be the standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch square. I'm gonna do two of those. One of them will be my background. The other one, I'm going to use the stitched hillside borders and die cut a border from each side of this for the bottom of my card. Now, accidentally, I flipped that die and didn't get the stitching design. I don't know how I didn't notice it as I was working on this, but I was able to fix it. I just had to die cut another border, not a big deal. You'll see that here in a little bit when I go to start coloring them in, I realized that I completely lost the stitching detail because I'd flipped it upside down, which you could totally do. You do not have to use the stitching side. I'm also using an ocean waves border so that I'll have a water background. Move all of my die cut pieces out of the way. I'll zoom in here a little bit. Now on smooth cardstock, you have to use the ink blending tools and the distress inks uh, with a little lighter hand than you would on a watercolor cardstock. So you don't get any of those harsh lines, but I do think the color blends and kind of as it dries, blends out much nicer than what it looks originally. I use Salty Ocean for the waves, and then I'm using some antique linen for my sand borders. Just build up that color all the way across my border. And here's where I started to color it and I realized, oh, I have no stitching. That's not good. So I did have to grab a 
another rectangle, use a little post-it tape, go ahead and die cut that real quick, and then I can add the antique linen distress ink to that. I like leaving in those little um, mistakes that I make so that you can see that the design process for me does not always go perfectly, not at all. For my background, I'm applying a little tumbled glass distress ink. I do not have to go all the way down to the bottom since that's going to be covered up with my borders. Just work to blend this out. This is a nice light color. And I try to make it a little lighter near the top of the design. So there are my little beach and the water behind. Now I felt the sky needed something, so I did die cut a sun using the Lawn Fawn Sun and Moon die collection. So I die cut the circle, applied squeezed lemonade to it. And I did go back around the edge of that with a little wild honey. I didn't ink it up necessarily. I just used my ink blending tool to add that color around the edge. And I die cut some clouds using the puffy clouds from Lawn Fawn. I'm going to go ahead and stamp my greeting from Penguins in Paradise using black ink and do that along the bottom edge of that top sand border. I felt like it wasn't lining up perfectly, so I was just trying to make sure it was exactly the way I wanted it to look. Go ahead and replace that. Such a cute, fun greeting. And I really felt like my son needed some additional color, so I die cut the other sun piece and colored it with some of the Wild Honey Distress ink. Then I'm ready to put the whole thing together. I attached my background to a Simon Says Stamp side fold card base. I'm attaching all three borders, one on top of another, and then attaching them along the bottom edge of the scene. I'm gonna start with my palm trees and just really layer these images. Some are tucked behind elements, some are in front. In the finished card, you'll notice that I did move the surfboard down to be in line with the little penguin holding the popsicle. I felt like it was too high up. It looked like it was in the ocean. I just didn't like how it looked. So in the finished card, it is lower. It's on that top border, laying on top of that top border. Just tucking all these elements, finish this all up. The clouds are hanging off the edge, so I'll flip that over trim off the excess, and that will finish up this really cute penguin beach scene card. Thanks for watching this video showcasing lots of different stamps and dies from different manufacturers to create a penguin beach scene card. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more water beach underwater themed cards you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.